Hi everyone, my name is Igor and welcome to my channel. It's been quite a while since I've last posted a video on 3D printing and although I've been working on a video on 3D printed parts strength for quite a while, ultimately I've decided not to release it mainly because I've realized that the uh, footage that I had and uh, my measurement uh, procedures were kind of crappy. So for now, Today I will just talk about some of the new prints that I have, including some quite functional ones. And I've also put some clues about what my next video will be in this one. So let me know in the, down below in the comments if you think you found those clues and have an idea what the next video will be. <laughs> For some reason, the video that I was working on uh, for the last couple of months was plagued by various issues, both of personal and technical nature, almost as if it was cursed. For instance, at one point, I stopped being able to level the print bed. Regardless of what I was doing, one corner was totally out of whack. I got completely frustrated and honestly I was ready to throw the printer out of the window uh, since it wasn't making any sense from, from the geometry perspective. I mean, the plane should still be defined by three points, right? But it looked like as if as it wasn't defined by three points anymore. Ultimately I had to pretty much disassemble my printer and reassemble it because it had turned out that the gantry was all over the place instead of being true and square. I suspect, still not 100% sure, that this may have been caused by me carrying the printer inappropriately. Well, lessons learned, don't pick up and carry your printer around by the gantry, even for a short period of time. Uh, well. Uh, this has also given, given me an opportunity to replace the Y-axis bearings, which started making grinding noises from time to time. I've replaced them with uh, the dryling bushings, uh, and they've been working perfectly so far. And I've also replaced the uh, carriage plate with a sturdier and lighter one made of uh, the machined aluminum. I've printed this comical Thanos Kirby hybrid for my son. Initially this was a model for an SLE printer, but my FDM printer did a fairly good job with it after I've scaled it up. Of course, a lot of support removal and sanding was required. I'm gonna put a link to this model in the video description. I'm painting it with uh, Tamiya acrylic paints and I'm also going to weather it a little bit and spray it with a clear coat. And here's the completed model after two layers of a clear top coat. It may be a little bit too shiny for my liking but it still looks pretty decent and it actually uh, looks much better in real life than in the video. Still, I like it and I hope my son will like it too. Another set of prints for my son was done for his Nerf gun collection. Uh, the guns and the ammo was all over his room and uh, of course it was adding to a mess which is a uh, typical boy's bedroom usually is. Uh, to deal with that I bought a sheet of pegboard at Home Depot and uh, painted it with uh, a dark metallic spray paint to give it like a hammered metal look. So then I had two problems to deal with. Uh, first of all, this, this thing is made of some sort of particle board and the corners were already fraying. Also, since I rent this apartment, I wanted to avoid drilling holes in the, in the wall to mount the pegboard. So I decided to put it on top of an IKEA 2x2 Kallax shelf. And to accomplish that I had to prop it up with something so it doesn't slide off. I also needed to prevent the corners from fraying. And this is where 3D printing comes into play. 
I've taken a few measurements and quickly modeled corner covers and bottom brackets in Fusion 360. The models are very simple, so it didn't take me long to create them despite my obvious lack of 3D modeling experience. Now let's slice the models and print them. This is a small print, so it won't take long. At this point, I've realized that the pegboard uh, will be prone to tipping over once I put everything on it. Uh, so I needed to model and print uh, a few small brackets to fix the top to the wall. Well, back to Fusion 360. I'm using the bottom bracket as a base and I'm modifying it, making it thinner and adding a lip. I'm also going to modify the hole so it can fit a paper pin instead of a wood screw. By snipping off the top of a paper pin, I am able to fit it inside and secure it with a drop of super glue. This will allow me to pin it to the wall instead of drilling a hole. Ok, this way tipping over is prevented. The top brackets fit pretty snugly, so looks like I've guessed the size right. Now the guns are arranged neatly on the display and I think it looks pretty cool. So that's it for today. I hope you liked this video and I wonder if you were able to notice the hints for the next one. If so, please let me know down below in the comments. As usual, if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a like, feel free to share it, consider subscribing to my channel, and of course, any comments are always welcome. Thanks for watching, happy tinkering, and don't forget to have fun! Bye!